Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown, everybody. In this video, I wanted to do a quick and easy tutorial on how you can color code your tracks in Reaper using the SWS extensions. Not only does this make your Reaper sessions look a lot cooler, it's actually extremely useful to color code your tracks, and it'll save you a lot of time if you can have the software automatically do it for you. So let's not waste any time and let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do is go to reaper.fm. Under resources, you'll see the SWS Reaper extension link. Click that and it'll bring you to sws-extension.org. And this is where you can download the SWS extensions for Reaper. So select the download link for your operating system. Once downloaded, click on the image in the downloads folder so that you can load the installer. Agree to the license terms. So to install the extensions, you would click and drag on this icon here and drag it to the user plugins folder. Now there are some optional Python function wrappers and groove templates down below, but we're not going to work with that for today. Once installed, you can close this out. Okay, and let's open a session in Reaper so that we can see what we're working with. So I'm going to create a new project. We'll call this SWS color and then save. Okay, so here, what we want to do is when we create a new track by double clicking in the track control panel or using any of the key commands that are available, and we enter a name for the track, something like vocals, for example, we want that track to automatically set to a specific color. Some people like to use the first letter of the instrument and the closest color that comes to mind with that. So for example, for blue, it'd be bass, green, it'd be guitar, violet for vocals, and then for drums, you'd have red, but you get the idea. There's also plenty of discussion online. So you can go to certain forums, like on Reddit, for example, well, you can see how people color code their tracks. People that have been in the industry for a while, they can tell you what works for them. Uh, or you can just see what looks cool to you. In either case, though, I highly recommend coloring your tracks because this is going to save you a great deal of time if your track count gets extremely high in a session. So that you know exactly where your vocals are, you know exactly where your drum tracks are, your synths, your pianos, and so forth. So the first thing I want to point out right away is that I'm using a different theme in Reaper. And that's why it might look a little different than the Reaper that you're using. If you want a quick instructional video, I think it's only a couple minutes max on how to install a theme or change your theme, uh, just click on the link above. Anyway, this is going to work for anybody that has the SWS extensions installed, regardless of the theme that you're using. So to work with the extensions, you can go to the Extensions tab at the top menu. Click on Auto Color Icon Layout. Then here's where I already have my preset saved for my track colors. But we can go through the process together. So what you're going to do is you're going to use some type of filter. So I have things like Vox or Vocals. I use to filter out certain tracks. So if a track has the word Vox in it or a track has the word Vocal, like Main Vocal, then it's going to auto set that track color to the color that I've set here. So when you open this up, you're not going to see any rules here. It's going to be a blank slate for you to work with. So to add a rule, click the Add Rule. And then what that does is it brings a new rule at the bottom of the auto color icon layout filter. And because I already had 23 rules defined, there's going to be a 24th rule here. For you, it might be the first rule. You have to give it a name, so you can double click on the name. And what you're going to put here is what word or letters are you going to incorporate in your track name where you want those track colors to be auto updated. So for example, if you want to have all your guitars green, or you can set different types of green depending on if it's lead or rhythm. But let's say you want all your guitars green, then you might put guitar here. Another thing you might do is GTR. So what might help you in this instance is to set up the tracks on the left in the track control panel here. Name those tracks the way that you would in a session. So incorporate all the types of instruments you would have. Vocals, drums, bass, guitars, electric guitars, pianos, keyboards, um, maracas, anything that you want to add that you want to have a distinct color. Uh, ambient sounds, uh, sends, reverbs, stuff like that, right? Uh, make sure you have that all here so that you're referencing it while you're doing these colors. For me, I know that I like to have the word guitar in my guitar tracks, or at least GTR. So lead GTR or lead guitar. So then you can add that for the name. So you type GTR. All right, since I already have one, I'm going to make this a little different so that I don't override the one that I already have. But for you, it'd be GTR. Then you right-click on the hex code for the color and click Set Color. This brings up an entire color wheel at your disposal. 
Uh, you can also go by RGB sliders, but I find the color wheel a little bit easier to work with. So let's just go with guitars are green. So I'm going to click this and drag it to the green that I want. And then I'll use a slider so I can darken it up depending on where I select it in the color wheel. Okay, so we'll have something like this green looks pretty good for guitars. All right, and then if you go to the RGB sliders, you can actually see what that hex color is. If you already know in advance, like you've used a color wheel online, for example, or you have some faint idea of what colors you want, and you know either the RGB values, so that's red, green, blue, or you know the hex color number, you can just type that in. You don't have to waste time with the color wheel or these sliders. But for those of us that don't know and we go off of visuals, just select the color that you want in the wheel, and then you can close out and it'll have that set here for you. So to test this out, I have the filter GTR1. So if I go add a new track, right, double click the track control panel, and I type lead GTR1 and hit enter, then it auto color codes that track. It might look a little different from you, depending on the theme that you're using, like I mentioned before. So then if I go and record audio onto this track, uh, I'm just gonna use my microphone since that's already plugged into my interface. So input mono, record. Okay, so now that I have the correct output on my audio interface set, now we can go ahead, record my voice onto this track, and it'll show you what the color coding does. So let's arm this and let's record something. Testing out the color coding in the track arrange view. So it's really cool that when you have an entire song and an entire session, then you can go ahead and have all of these color coded and you can know exactly where your lead guitar is. So let's copy this, right? We'll call this a rhythm guitar with the GTR1. Okay, and again, because I have GTR1 in the title and that's the filter that we set here in the auto color, it's gonna highlight this track is green. And if I bring this audio down, you'll see that the audio here is the same color as the track color. Okay, so let's remove these tracks. And because I already have a filter for my guitars, I'm gonna remove the filter here by selecting it and clicking remove. So as you can see here, I have colors set for all my different types of instruments. So let me just go add a few tracks and show you what that looks like. Okay, so we'll have guitar. I use the same color green for my guitars. And we'll add vocals, synths, drums, right? The way that I have it is the word synth makes it pink, so I could just call this synth, okay? Or I could call this lead, synth lead, saw synth, whatever you want to name, as long as the word synth is in there, it's going to be pink. And if I bring down these audio, the audio, you can see that the tracks follow suit with the track colors. Now, one last thing I want to point out is priority. So the lower the number, the higher the priority that the filter has. So you could separate your vocals, you could have your main vocals use one color, your harmonies use a different color, and your backing vocals and doubles using another color. I have these all set to the same, but what I have differently is effects. So this FX right here, this filter is a different color. And because it's a higher priority, it would have a higher priority over vocal if I use both of those filters in the same track. For example, if I use vocal effects as the track name, then it's gonna prioritize the effects color over the vocal color. So let me show you what that looks like. The so vocal FX, and you can see it's this type of yellow. So if I click on the filter up here, I have this FX set to this yellowish color. And let me just bring down the audio again so you can see the difference. Okay, so because even though I have the word vocal, which is set to a bluish color, because I have the effects on it and that's a higher priority, that's gonna set it to this yellowish color. Okay, so that concludes it for this video. I hope this was really helpful for you. I know it's just a fun and easy thing that we can work with. It's gonna really help to have those tracks auto-colored. So you can imagine if you have, say, 100 tracks, and then just note that this also affects the mixing panel as well. So if you go to your mixer, like Control-M or Command-M on a Mac, then you're gonna see that the tracks are also color-coded here. So thanks again for joining the Ultimate Mix Down. If this video helped you out, hit the like button. If you want to see additional videos and more tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I hope to see you in the next video.